Okay, welcome back um, uh, and to to the to our next class. Uh, we've been uh, we just completed in our uh, last class. We've just uh, we just looked at two portions of um, challenges in marriage and also uh, how we can move forward by releasing the past. We're going to get into our next section. Uh, uh, something I love, which is about parenting. Okay, sections on parenting. Um, so, just want to know, uh, just have a raise of hands of how many parents we have on this group. We have... One, two... Three, four, five, six. Just six parents in the group? Seven. Yes, Tarun. You are. You qualify as one. <laughs> okay, so seven parents on the group. Okay. All right. Okay, so so that's good. Yeah, great. Thank you. All right. So um at the, the current section that we are going to be looking at, uh, we have two specific chapters. We we are going to the first uh, first part, which uh, which we will be doing uh, part of it today and then also next week, is um, certain insights and biblical insights on parenting, and uh, followed by that we will be looking at certain um, practical ways of how we nurture children. Okay, and also um, we look at one one specific chapters chapter on when children become adults. Okay, that there is a lot about parenting that we can learn. However, this is just a really short um, and sweet package that we can give. But there are there is so much that we can we can look into. Um, we have a couple of sermons on on parenting also and you know if you could look back at uh, the uh, apc's uh, uh, sermon list you will find a few that's there on parenting challenges and how uh, we you know the roles of a, of a of a of a father mother um and and issues with parenting there are a few that are, that's there but of course there's so much of extensive um learning and understanding about it. But today, what we are really going to look at is a few um, insights into parenting uh, and how, uh, as a couple working into marriage, we need to continue, we need to be prepared, just like how you get prepared in uh, living together with a spouse, also knowing how to parent and how to nurture children uh, in itself. Okay, so these, this is just going to be laying a foundation for the role as parents. So even if, you know, th there may be many of you who aren't parents yet, okay, uh, or who are waiting on God to be parents, we encourage you to not switch off, but to, uh, you know, go through this, uh, these chapters and uh, be prepared well in advance uh, for what may be, uh, you know, what may be imminent for you, okay? Uh, so as we, uh, as we had learned, when we look back at the first chapter, we saw the way God designed marriage. Okay, God was the one who instituted marriage. He was the one who solemnized marriage. So we are safe to assume that all the things or everything that happens uh, from that institution is also that which is appointed by God, which is divinely appointed by God. So also parenting. And this is in line with scripture. When we read Malachi chapter 2, verse 15, I'm sorry, you can follow with me on page um, 155. Yes, you can follow with me on page 155. Okay, so if you look into scripture in Malachi chapter 2, verse 15, it says, didn't God make you one body and spirit with her? What was his purpose in this? It was that you should have children who are truly God's people. So make sure that none of you breaks his promise to his wife. So we see that one of God's many purposes 
in marriage, in uniting a husband and a wife together, is so that there comes godly children out of it, okay, and thereby godly generations that can be conti that continue the work of God and uh, expand the kingdom of God. So, so God, it was in God's desire that when He brings a man and a woman together, uh, it, it is also to bring about godly offspring. So, uh, this is this was always in God's mind. Parent hood was always in in God's mind. So as a couple getting ready to live uh, forward in life, you know, to be able to embrace the call of being a parent, okay, it is a responsibility. It is a ministry, okay, because it, we, we're saying that it's a divine calling. We also see it as something God has ordained, and thus it's a ministry, something that God planned and uh, God planned a, a place uh, where the parents partner with God in, in carrying out the purposes that he has for the family or, you know, for, for that generation. So parenting is something that you embrace because it's a calling. It's a ministry. It's, uh, it's an appointed appointing by God. Okay, to raise up those godly offspring, those godly children. So it's it is something that God opens out to His uh, children to partner with Him so that His purposes can be fulfilled. Okay, so you are each of us who are here as parents are privileged because we have been called for a ministry. Okay, mm. and no matter. Uh, no matter what the age of your child is, whether they are a little infant, whether they're a school going, whether they're teens, whether they're adults, whether they've left, there is a call that we partner with God. Probably in um, after a point of time, your, your uh, direct influence and impact may be much lesser. Maybe as, you, as your children become adults and they leave, your direct impact um, may be lesser. Nevertheless, you know, you are still uh, called to be that parent who, um, who, who, as I get into my next point, represents the Heavenly Father. So when we look into scripture, we see that from Ephesians 3, 14 to 15, it says, For this reason I fall on my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth receives its true name. So we see that the origin of every family is God, the Heavenly Father. So God being the Heavenly Father has a large family and all of us are part of his family. So there is a part of his family here on earth and there is his part of his family in heaven. And all of us receive everything from him. Like, for example, those of you, those of us who have children, they carry your name, they carry your identity, they carry your, your culture, your, your language, your everything, right? So they, your, your, they carry your inheritance. So whatever is mine, belongs to my children. Whoever I am, they are also a part of. So in the same way, our God, our Heavenly Father, from Him comes, He's the origin of everything that we receive, we have. So our name, our identity, our being, our security, everything comes from God. It all flows from God, who is the Father to every one of us. OK, so as we look up to God, our father, we are also called to represent him to our children. Now, when we look at the children, scripture says, Psalm 127, 3, they are a heritage from the Lord. They are an inheritance from the Lord, which means that our children belongs to God, but they have been given to us and we are their stewards which means they are a gift, but they are not your possession. You're not the one who owns them. 
the first time i heard this uh, you know that our children are not a possession it it made me think because you know especially um uh, at this point of time my my kids are teens i have a 16 year old son and i have a 12 year old daughter and uh, for those of us who are parenting teens completely understand um what goes you know the worry sometimes that we may have in the things they do the things they watch the things they engage in the purposes they have uh everything becomes like a like a question because now they are blooming to be individuals on their own having an identity an earthly identity of their own okay and very often when we look at when i i'll speak for myself when i look at them as a parent i sometimes see lord how far away are they in their identity of you how far they are away of you and this one line has always given me uh, a sense of solace that my children are not my own they are not my possession they have been given to me by god so which means that god is the one who's made them framed them knit them in my womb uh, created them for purposes and i am here as a caretaker and whenever a caretaker has trouble managing what's been entrusted to them they always go back to the master they go back to the master and say master you know you've given me this but i'm having trouble with this and the master always has a good answer has has a perfect solution so as a caretaker i can run to my god i can run to my father and ask and you know seek that help so so that i mean this is just outside but just telling you that you know that very sentence in itself gives me such freedom to know that they are not my possession they are gifted to me they are they they are they are although yes i am a caretaker i need to steward them well i don't have to take the burden of knowing everything because god in his wisdom will help me to find things he will give me those answers at the right time okay uh, yeah so this is just out of it just a just maybe a, a sharing yeah, so so as as a parent we are called to represent the father to our children so we are in the place of um of of the attitudes that go attitudes the the nature of god we are representing all of who god is to our children now that seems like a huge responsibility because as parents you and i know how imperfect we are how many mistakes we make on a day to day basis and uh, a lot of times we do know that um, we sometimes we have not been learned from those mistakes but we are still in the process god is still working on us as parents on the way that we show out god to them so through this one of the uh, underlying factors or underlying foundations that we need to know is that in my waking in my sleeping in my eating in my reading in my daily living i am showcasing god to them so that that is what our this should be that desire our goal that our children will see god in all that we do so that's that the aim of parenting that we will model showcase the heavenly father to our children not just in the way that we speak but in the way that we do things the way that we are the way that we conduct ourselves even even when we think that they are not watching us because our children begin to get the picture of who god is by looking at us um so i i keep telling my father um my father uh, is a 
uh, he's he's 84 now more like a child but in his prime years my father was very protective of his children so we are two girls and he was he he was um not that he isn't right now he's too old um but but in his you know in the prime of his parenting he was very protective of his girls and um uh, there was nothing that he wouldn't know there was nothing that you know he just felt he he was like he almost like had his big arms around his girls not ensuring that no harm no uh, you know nothing goes wrong with them and because of the way that my dad was it is big it is i i see god as a as a father like that you know i'm able to see um a, a a bigger glimpse of who god is because of what my father exhibited and i think even as i'm saying this um there may be many of us here who've not had a good representative um of a father of an earthly father okay but that does not minimize or negate or or take away the truth of the fact of who god the father really is and who who in actuality is but for us as parents who are in this generation parenting our children to know that the picture of god comes from our own parents and for us to do everything we can by the power of god by the work of the holy spirit and by the wisdom that we have to be able to represent god the father as he truly is and what does that mean that can mean very many things right it can mean the love that we show the discipline that we give the security that we that we give to our children all of that so there are many things and i want to bring you back to to a scripture which is ephesians uh 317 to 19 i'm on page 156 would someone who's not read a scripture up until now just unmute and read ephesians 317 to 19 yes could somebody read okay maybe okay because i said someone who hasn't abhishek would you like to read abhishek abhishek or nisha or she i can yes, yes go ahead go ahead abhishek yes efficient 3 17 to 19 19 okay okay uh that christ may dwell in your heart through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the wide length and depth and height to know the love of christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of god thank you thank you abhishek so you know in the scripture it shows you of the the biggest way you you can represent the love of god is by understanding what god's love is and you see the dimensions of god's love you know it talks about love through the breadth the length the height and the depth okay so it's it's in all dimensions the breadth the length the height sorry breadth the length the height and the depth so in all of its dimensions it is something that is uncomparable a love that cannot be measured a love that has no limits a love that has no conditions a love that is has no bounds it's it's boundless and it is with that kind of love that the father loves us and it is the same kind of love that we are called to love our children loving our children does not come because of what they do or of who they are 
or of what they achieve or of what they perform or how they behave or how they look as against the world's standards. But loving them comes because we love them because of who they are, of the people they are. It does not come at certain times. It comes at all times. Uh, keep, you know, even uh, keeping away times of, uh, um, you know, difficulty or times when they have been bad or when they have disappointed us, we love them regardless of what they have done or how they have behaved. We continue to believe in them. We continue to forgive them. We continue thinking about the best, desiring for the best, knowing that everything we do is comes because of this unconditional love. So we love our children because of the way God loves us. And that's how one of the biggest ways that we represent God, the Father, to, to our children. Okay. The next, uh, the next, I think there was a question. Yes. Yes, Christopher. Go ahead. I think you have a question. Uh, yes. Uh, so I wanted to just, uh, I guess, um, it weird is that, you know, there, there sometimes there's this, this level of disconnect. Uh, or, uh, you know, um, uh, you know we, we know that, you know, we are aware and I think our children also are aware that, you know, we have flaws and um, uh, we show that sometimes, in, you know, in, in moments of weakness. So, uh, you know, uh, it could also be uh, flaws that, um, that get reminded to our parents, you know, that we were flawed, you know, in, in the past. And um, mm -hmm. because of the sort of a generation gap, or because of the passing of of, of time, uh, they can always point, you know come back and point out to us that you know that we have been flawed, and you know therefore, uh, uh, you know, they they in a sense you know um, take that as a as a way of you know uh, indicating that you know that they can also be flawed. Uh, so that is one part of it. The other part of it is that we are also striving to represent God. And, uh, and some of these uh, ways of doing it is, you know, we are, we are trying to demonstrate maybe, you know, um, agape love, uh, which is, you know, extremely difficult. And uh, what, I, what, I, what I see is in even the feedback I get sometimes, you know, for my, um, I, I have a son, uh, is that, you know, we are trying, we are to, you know, to do things which are uh, sometimes, uh, uh, very difficult to do and sometimes difficult to demonstrate, and uh, they see that that uh, you know they see that um, see that we are trying, but they also see that we are flawed, and um, this creates that level of you know uh, uh, inconsistency, uh, which um, uh, I think sometimes is, there is maturity and you know shown by my son, for example, who you know says okay you know, you know the, the human humanness of, of of, of being a father is, is very, uh, he recognizes that and he gives me credit for that. Mm. But um, still, uh, you know, being able to, uh, you know, achieve these things, which or one is, which is, which is like, a, you know, uh, in some ways, uh, not, not, a, not, a, not, achie not achievable. And then being able to, you know, also, you know, uh, show that, you know, there, there is a imperfection, uh, uh, in myself as a father and as a person, uh, there's that, you know, there's, there's that disconnect over there. So I just, I just mm. want to get some, you know, get some uh, your okay. view from you on that. Right. So, so Christopher, um, we, so you, you are, you are right uh, for the fact that we as human parents are not perfect. We are flawed. There are many mistakes we continue making. Something, many things that our children also see. But I think the, the beauty of it lies when we as parents can go back to our children and come to a place of helping them see 
that we have messed up and we do need the grace of god to help us even in simple things um so i'm i'm going to take back an example so something when i was uh, when my kids were younger um there were certain ways that i liked things to be done uh, so much so that you know it probably can lead a child to feel very frustrated um and uh, so however in my mind i thought of it as maybe a discipline or a way that children should a certain structure that the children need to have um certain ethics they need maybe manners and ethics that they need to have it's so much so that i lost the mark from being compassionate gentle understanding to being probably like a strong disciplinarian and the way that it came out was um you know maybe too strong for them to really see that there was grace in that entire situation but as i grew up as my children began to voice their displeasure i began to you know they opened my eyes to see that that was not perfect that was an error that was wrong but i think that's where we as a parent needs to have the humility and the grace to go back and seek forgiveness from our children asking them for forgiveness for maybe the way that we have treated them maybe out of our we thought our understanding was right <clears throat> because we were older and we were parents but through experience or through a conviction through what god has opened up to us or maybe through what they have said we come to a place of seeking forgiveness and that's when our children begin to see that you it's not about being perfect it's about being um right in the eyes of god that you have you come to a place of learning from your mistakes and coming to them and seeking that apology i think there's a lot of power in that because uh, parents who are able to come to their children and seek an apology or seek forgiveness for something that may have been harmful and also committing to working on those areas uh, thereafter shows their commitment to god shows their commitment to uh, uh and i think that builds that connect you were talking about a disconnect that happens but they begin to build that connect that you know even as a parent they require we require just as much of grace and mercy from god to do this job and that i think becomes very powerful in the mind and in the life of a child um so even if it may be um so th that there could be times you know uh, and i'm sure a lot of us parents uh, uh have seen this that in our times of frustration we could probably be impolite or disrespectful to the children and uh, so when whenever i come back to my senses i go back and i apologize to them i said i'm sorry for the way that i behaved not justified not right i've got to be more careful please forgive me and would you help me with this would you catch me the next time i may be going there and you know we have a, a kind of a code or a, or something that we we do that that they remind me about about what i've done wrong or what i'm what i may be getting into so that i think helps because we cannot be truth be told you and i are not perfect we will make mistakes we are uh uh we are in places where we can flaw over and over again um because we are human but we know that 
you know, when we do seek forgiveness, we come back and truly repent, not just to our children, but to God, the grace and the relationship is restored over there. Yeah, I hope I answered your question, Christopher. Okay. All right. So we will, um, even as we, we have spoken about, you know, unconditional love, the uh, the other foundational thing as we parent to to understand is that we are role models parents serve as role models to our children you know the parents serve as role models not just in their direct interactions with their children but through the examples we set with our attitude and behavior not just in the family, but also in the outside world. What is a role model? A role model is someone who is looked up. It's someone who is seen as an example, as someone who, who needs to be followed, who's, uh, who's taken after. You, you know that, you know, as your children uh, grow, they may have a lot of role models as they grow up, right? It could be cartoon figures, it could be movie stars, it could be, um, you know, depending on what their interest and likes are, you will find that, right? But you as a parent serves as the greatest role model. Because, uh, and how does that happen? It's often uh, through your own, the way that, uh, you know, your own personality, your own character, the attitudes you have, the achievements you've done, the vocation you hold, um, the mannerisms you have, all of this influence your child. It influences their behavior. It affects their own attitudes. It may, you know, desire for them to be like you. It may motivate them into some form of an action. So the, the role model plays uh, a, a role where... Uh, you know, the, the person who's looking up to them, even without a direct involvement, a lot of these things are <clears throat> emulated. When it comes for children, we see that parents become the very first role model. And uh, as children are smaller, you will find that they take a lot of pride in what their parents do or their parents say or the parents are. Uh, you see, you know, especially your seven, eight-year-olds bragging about their parents. You know, my, my dad did this, or my dad has a car like this, or he goes to this kind of an office, or my mom does this. So they, you know, on depending on the relationship, children do want to become like their parents. And, because, and when we have an understanding like that, we see that that is a privilege for us, that puts us in a privileged place. Because by default, uh, the children start to look at uh, parents right from the beginning. And also, you know, not just looking at, at the parents, but then on a regular basis, because of the kind of influence and impact we have, of the, have on them daily, ongoing, over a period of time, the opportunity is far, far greater. Okay, so when we as parents lead lives that are examples, we make it much easier for the children. So as a role model, there are two ways it can go. We can either uh, build, a str uh, become a strong, strong role model, or we can tend to lose that that uh, that position and have no influence or impact on their lives. So, so how do we become role models, or how how do children look at us inherently? Uh, so, something that my my daughter is twelve, and uh, she has an uncanny resemblance with me. You know, so we we actually look so alike, and uh, so because people keep telling her that, you know, she keeps saying, you know, one thing I want to be different is to, to you know, to not, to not become a counselor like you, but I want to have other things 
like like you like you do or like you have okay so how do you now it's not that i i've influenced any of this but just i think through probably things that she has seen she has observed there are something she's picked up something she's decided that she doesn't want nevertheless we continue to become those influences by the way that we interact to our, with our children the attitudes that we show them the way that we probably behave with people in the home people outside the home the kind of language that we use the kind of uh, mannerisms that we show we begin to model things uh, for our children on the kind of people that they may that they may become so the greater influence that we can throw the great the better it is so influence is not just through instructions it's not just through what we say but it is mostly caught so you know it's uh, uh, you know it's not taught it is caught so more more than what we teach it's more than what we are or how we live out that they they pick up things so who we are and what we do is is definitely more stronger and more powerful than what we can say okay so children begins to match up with the things that we say and the things that we do and they will begin to see the discrepancy between that maybe i'm saying something but i'm doing something else that really brings about an impact and says okay is this person matching up are they congruent to what they're doing and that really settles for them if they would want to take this person as a role model so it gets easier for them uh you know to to emulate us and to be influenced by us when we not just represent god the father but we are also doing things or whatever we say we are also doing so being careful about that so as parents we are our children's first teachers and they are like these sponges that absorb everything that we do which means they just don't absorb only the good they also absorb the bad there are many things that they learn from us whether it be the way that we work you know the principles that we use the values that we hold the skills that we portray the way that we deal with elders the way that we deal with neighbors the way that we talk about people behind their backs um the the kind of attitudes we are holding towards people towards things the way that we um interact with but maybe uh, uh you know those who 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 may who who we don't see um uh, you know likely as 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 uh, favorable all of that they they pick up each and everything they also look at the way that we may be uh, resolving conflicts uh, how do we handle stress how do we handle um uh, difficulties what is our faith walk like so all of this gets emulated um the way that we may portray um uh life or the way that we talk about god the way that we um, you know let's say in in a situation where, where where you need to make a decision how do you come across a decision you know is is it is at a time where you seek the lord in prayer or is it a time that you impulsively take a decision all of these responses will definitely determine the way the impact that comes on our children so the way that we focus on life the way that we live our life uh is is so important because that's what we are modeling you know it uh, th th there is the saying that says there are always those pairs of eyes that are watching you you know whatever you are doing they're watching you and they begin to uh develop many things about life about people about us about um about god through the way that we do so um we also need to be careful uh you know as as we have as we continue to parent that we do not make mistakes that we've made or make the mistakes that probably our parents have made as they have brought us up there are many things that we continue to need to unlearn and i and i say this uh, you know when i take these parenting workshops every day i may need to unlearn something 
uh, from what I've done with my children because uh, you know each day I begin to see that there is some trait within me that can be uh, that can be more godlike that can be more Christ like okay so be in a place of unlearning not in a place of knowing that you know as a parent you don't know at all and know and uh, uh, seeing for yourself that god can change that for you he can mold that for you when we consciously go to god and ask uh, that we are pleasing in his eyes so that we can be pleasing uh, uh, in the eyes of our children so being that being that role model is something that we continue to work on no matter where we are whether we are the parent of a little baby parent of a school year old a school going child a parent of a teenager a parent of an of a young adult wherever we are let's remember that we are still in that place where they are watching those two eyes are watching okay all right um so we've through this we've just uh, started building on those foundations of uh, uh, taking on our role as parents taking it as a ministry being able to represent the father by showing out his unconditional love and being that role model okay so we will wind up here for today next uh, week we will look a little bit more into detail of um, of 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 children of what are children and how does god see them and what are some of the way that we can we can uh, even disciplinary methods what are things that we can use and we can uh, godly principles that we can uh, use to help our children in the way of the lord okay uh, any questions we have around 3 or 4 minutes uh, for any questions if you'd like to ask Yes, yes, Shay, go ahead. Shay, oh, I, oh, okay, there was another question by Louis and, okay, Shay, till, uh, till you unmute, I'm going to take up, yes, yes, Shay, go ahead, go ahead. I'll oh, yes, I, I just, I, I just wanted to just um, kind of buttress what you said from a quote I saw. It says that um, I, uh, a father is the son's first superhero and a daughter's first love. Just to kind of buttress the, um, yeah. the position, you know, parents um, hold in the lives of children. Um, we're, we're kind of first in everything at the end of the day. So, yeah, just to buttress what you've just said. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chase. Yes. Okay, so uh, there's a question by Louis. He's written, Pastor, where do we as parents draw the line between being parents and trying to be God in the lives of our children? Okay, that's a that's an excellent question. Okay, um, so uh, uh, I think the primary thing we need to know, and I'm going back to that verse that said, children are a gift from the Lord and inheritance, which means and represents that God has a specific purpose in their lives. And we as parents are called to open opportunities for our children. And as they age, as they grow, give them the freedom to, um, to recognize, uh, sorry, uh, I'm just going back. Uh, give them the teaching and the learning to recognize and being vigilant and open about what purposes the Lord has for their lives. And in time, as they age, open up opportunities and help them recognize what they may be called to do. So often we see parents living out their dreams uh, in the lives of their children. Something that they have not been able to fulfill, they want to see fulfilled in their children. That, I see, is something that um, is not according to what God wants, because God, it's God's purpose that has to be fulfilled in their lives and not the purposes of us as a parent. So which means 
they may be quite different from the way that uh, you see and you understand things. So I'll, I'll give you a very live example. Now, my 16-year-old son, um, in the last two, three years, he's developed certain skills um, of art, uh, you know, a lot of things very unlike what a boy would do, a lot of crochet, uh, a lot of hand knitting, hand craft, uh, very agile with his fingers, so and very precise and neat in the way that he does things. So, uh, you know, as a boy, there are probably certain perceptions in our minds that there should be certain things or certain structure or certain careers or things that they need to have. And over the initial years, we began to see or noticed that he wasn't those typical kind of boys who rough houses, plays football, cycles out, climbs trees, none of that. Was a more quieter, um, more people person, more art oriented, more into music, more into paperwork, more into craft. And, um, uh, you know, so, so I began to see that God was putting certain gifts into his life right from the beginning. And they were very small ones. Um, and there were many times I was told by the elderly in my home that you should get him out for a game. You should get him out to exercise and cycle and climb trees. But I knew within my spirit that that, 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 was, that was not him. Uh, so there were times, and, and I think he's faced a lot of issues from even friends, you know, uh, um, saying that he he doesn't play like other boys does or doesn't run like other boys do and has faced those setbacks. But from over years, I'm able to see over, let's say, over the last five to six years, the way the Lord has begun to shape his interests, shapes his giftings in such a way that is quite unique to him. And if we are able to allow and maybe at times sit back, provide opportunities, that does not mean you don't provide opportunities, provide opportunities. But if you do see that they don't work well in those opportunities, don't push and force them into something you think is needed because God may have very different plans for them. Uh, so something that, you know, we're, my husband and I love music. My husband plays, he sings. And that was a big desire for us that our kids would pick up that. Unfortunately, either of them haven't. But yes, those opportunities were given. But, you know, in time, they, they dropped out of that. And we had to gracefully, uh, you know, relent and say, that's okay. You know, it's okay. God has other plans for them. So being vigilant and being sharp to look and use wisdom to see what are things that God is birthing in them is very important to allow God to have supremacy in their lives rather than you uh, doing things, uh, wanting them to do things according to your liking. I hope I answered that, Louis. Okay, Sam, I think you've asked a question quickly, just two minutes. As parents, we can either have our children safe or we can make them strong. Uh, I'm not able to see that sentence. Please comment on how to discern between when to step in and protect our kids from harm, that is bullying, bad influence from peers, versus trust that they will be able to fight their own battles and learn from experiences. OK. All right. Um, so this, I think, is also dependent on the age of children. But right from the beginning, I think one of the most important things we will be talking about some of them as we go ahead is one is to build open communication with our children in a way that they know it is safe for them to come and discuss anything with us. That's primary. The second thing is to know that we are, we want our children to learn ways in uh, in learning how to defend, or uh, in this case, defend, but learning how to deal with situations. 
Okay, it's one thing to step in for them. It's another thing to uh, open a, a, a place of communication and interaction where you are reliving a situation with them or you are uh, preparing them for a situation where you are there as a sounding board helping them to come up with ideas on how they can resolve a certain problem. So there are many ways. One way is you tell them, you know, the next time this guy comes to bully you, you do this, you do this, you do this, you do this. Okay, that becomes a very instructional method. The other way is, you know, let's talk about, let's say in a time someone bullies you. What do you think you would like? How would you, how do you think you would handle it? Okay, so in, in this way, it's more uh, interrogative or, or inquis inquisitional where you are getting them to also think, to also critically understand how they should respond. And there you can bring about correction and say, you know, um, maybe these are probably certain things that I would also do, or these are certain things that I would wonder, would, would you know, how would that be beneficial? So, so let's suppose the kid says, you know, next time he comes, I'm just going to knock him on his head and give him a, give him a tight, uh, tight one on his nose. So, you know, the way that we respond to that, hey, you can't do that. You know, God God says in, in his word not to do that. Yes, that is true. God says in his word not to do that. But you want the child to be able to come up with an understanding and say, okay, one, what do you think God's word says about it? What do you think the after effects of, of an action like that would be? So living through situations with them, making every moment teachable is something that really helps children to be prepared in, in working out uh, ways of how they would deal with situations. Uh, and, and as you're doing this over their ages, it is graded. Maybe for a two or a three year old, you, you may not really be able to, uh, you know, exchange and negotiate this with them. But then for a six or a seven year old, there's a lot more, lot more of discussion. For a 14 year old, there's much more, right? Maybe, maybe your stepping back is, is a lot lesser. So the, the, the few things is one, communication being in a place of actively communicating with them. Second is in a place of preparation where every moment of the day you make it teachable. You know, take things from here and there and, you know, bring it out as a situation and ask, how would you deal with it? Or this is the way that I dealt with it. What would you like to do in such a situation? So something that, you know, I keep telling my kids, uh, you know, uh, which, which I've been doing for long is when we are on trips and we see certain things, maybe there are kids smoking. I say, you know, these boys are smoking. What do you think of it? What What is your stand on it? What do you think the Bible says about it? What do you think the world says about it? So I throw questions. And in that way, they, I'm able to figure out what's on their mind. And I'm also able to help them verbalize and articulate what, you know, what they may be committing to do. So by the end of it, I'll say, you know, what would you commit to do in such a case or in such a situation? What do you think you would want to do? So, you know, at some point of time, when they are actually facing that situation, they come back and then they think of, okay, yeah, I had this conversation with mom and, you know, this is what I said I do. And I think, you know, that's what I'd like to follow. So in some way or the other, these conversations, these interactions will bring them back to a place of actual action. Okay, I hope I answered that question. I'm sorry, we are 10 minutes into uh, the session. If there's nothing, can we quickly close with a word of prayer? Okay, I, I think I have two or three more questions. I, uh, Nisha has a question. Nisha, may I please take this up uh, uh, next week? Uh, and uh, I've, so I've copied down your question. I'll take it up and we, we, will, discuss, we will start with this question next week, Nisha. Okay. May I please request somebody to uh, kindly pray and close? All right, I will pray. Thank you, Harrison. Our Father and our God, we want to thank you. We give you praise and we give you adoration. We give you thanksgiving. We give you all the glory for this word of knowledge, this word of wisdom that we've had this morning, this evening, this afternoon. Father, we thank you because we know that it is by your grace that we can do all these things that has been spoken. And we thank you because you have given us, a God, the, the 
capability, you've given us the capacity of God to be able to execute all these things that we've heard. Father, I pray, O oh God, that we as caretakers of oh God, we will not put you to shame or bring destruction to our children. Yeah. Father, we yeah. thank you, O oh God, that in this time, O oh God, in this era where things are going crazy, where there's so much chaos in the world, where there's so much corruption, things, you know, go bringing our children into the place, you know, that they're not supposed to be. Father, we pray, you know, God, that you also give us wisdom, oh God, to be able to say the right things, oh God, that we keep them, oh God, in your presence. Father, we thank you, God, for the words of wisdom, oh God, that we've heard from your servant, and we pray that you increase her in knowledge. And for us, the hearers, oh God, Father, may we not just be hearers of this word, but I pray that, Father, we shall also be doers of this word. I bless your name, oh God, that this shall make impact in every home and in every life represented here and in our, in our churches and community at large. I thank you, Father, because I know that the words that we've heard today, oh God, will not just only bless us, but will bring, oh God, expansion to your kingdom. I bless your name, Father, because we know that we are moving forward and not backwards. We give you all the glory and praise. Be thou exalted. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Harrison. Thank you, everybody. A quick reminder, please ensure that you do your assessment by the 5th of November. Right. Thank you. God bless. We'll meet you next week. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Pastor.